Question 12. Prove the identity below for all permissible values of theta. 1 plus 2 cos squared of theta all over cos squared theta equals tan squared theta plus 3. So uh, the first thing we want to do is uh, get our formula sheet close by if you haven't got your formulas memorized. Uh, the second thing we want to do is remember some of the things we do for proofs. And we want to start with the more complicated side. Uh, that's debatable for this one, but I would consider this to be the more complicated side because it has a binomial on the top and it's dividing by a monomial here. So what I would do, recommend as a strategy, is to perform the indicated division. So we can separate these two fractions here. We could write this division as two different fractions. Usually we're finding the common denominator now we're going to separate it. So 1 over cos squared theta plus 2 cos squared theta all over cos squared theta. So that is the first step. So all we did is we undid the fact that we have a common denominator. So we can see what cancels here cos squared over cos squared cancels to give us 1 and uh, we could simplify 1 over cos squared. Uh, 1 over cos squared of course is secant squared. 1 over cos is secant so 1 over cos squared is secant squared. All that's left is the 2 and now here's the point where we want to use our formula sheet. Remember look on your formula sheet and you will see that another way of writing secant squared is to say tan squared plus 1. So I'm going to replace that with tan squared theta plus 1. And then the plus 2 was from before. So now we're just going to simplify this expression. And the only thing we could combine is the 1 and the 2. So we get tan squared theta plus 3. And of course that actually equals the right hand side. So we're done for this first part of the question. You don't have to do the right hand side when we've already simplified it. When we took the left hand side and we showed it equal to the right hand side. So we got our two marks there. Uh, the next thing that we're going to do is question B. Determine all non-permissible values. So in other words, you know, we cannot divide by zero. So if we look at uh, what I just manipulated up here, the only place where we're potentially dividing by zero is um, 1 over cos squared. So cos squared cannot equal zero. So your cos is on the bottom. So what do we want to solve? We want to solve cos squared theta uh, equal to zero. So, uh, and that's all I could see for the non permissible values. Because you could write tan as sine over cos, but then that's still a cos theta equal to zero. So the squared here doesn't matter too much. So, right, because if we square root zero, we still get a plus or minus zero. So we will continue on and say cos equals zero. Now when we're solving this equation we want to remember what the cos graph looked like and I gotta try to remember that so we get 2 pi pi uh, cos is maximum at positive 1 so and then it goes down to a minimum at pi back to a center at 3 pi over 2 and back to a maximum so the reason I'm drawing this out is so I can remember the zeros of cos. And the zeros, of course, are happening here and here at pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2. So how do we write that? We write it as theta equals the first initial one is pi over 2. 
and the distance these are apart are pi. Because we want all non-permissible values, instead of just adding pi to get the next one, we will add multiples of pi. So I will say pi times k, where k is an integer. So this formula describes all the non-permissible values of cosine.